I'll tell you what, guys. Now we're out here in a little bit more light. Kind of get to show you the action a little bit better on camera. Because these really are a specialty tool. Like, I won't lie. This is not the kind of bait I'm going to find myself reaching for a lot of times if I'm fishing over deep water. I mean, sometimes throwing these shallow baits over suspended fish can be a really surprise tactic. But most of the time, if I'm wanting to get down, I'm not going to pick this bait. But when it shines, it really shines. Now, especially if you're fishing in rivers, you're trying to cast in the pockets of current. Glide baits work, but don't count these out. Because even when I'm just doing this, I'm getting maximum action. And I'm not moving it forward very much at all. Like the shorter the violent the tap you make, like it'll shake its head two or three times. You can feel it. But it's only maybe moving forward about half its body length at that. So it kind of stays in the same zone. but you still get that erratic response without covering a whole lot of water. It's a really efficient way to do it. But then you come to situations like this where you're fishing relatively expansive shallow water. And especially if you know there's fish here, like we know there's some fish here. Throwing spinner baits, nothing's wanted to follow that. Throwing glide baits. And I'm just doing this I'm not looking for a fish to follow. This is almost like an aggressive finesse fishing in that I'm just going maybe six inches forward every time I tap it, but I'm giving it a violent jerk, letting it sit. So every six inches I move forward, I'm basically covering it saying like, okay, is there an active fish here I can trigger? Okay, no. Is there an active fish here I can trigger? No. Is there an active fish here? I'm not expecting those fish to follow that bait when I'm doing this. I'm expecting them to just instinct strike it just out of the sheer erratic notion of it and the fact that it's diving just deep enough that it's getting right into the face of these fish in three to, few, uh, three to five feet of water. Not picking up weeds, kind of skimming over them, but it's got that erratic kick and then the fact that it's so buoyant, it just springs right back up. So it's doing an erratic kick out and then it basically evades going up. Sometimes give it a little bit longer pull. This is an incredibly effective tactic. I know a lot of guys that use this kind of presentation, they're fishing shallow weeds. Works really well like that. You can just see too. It's about as janky as they come. I'll tell you what, for a little bitty light bait, they cast like the Dickens too. She can cover a lot of water. Really hoping we just have a fish popping out though right now. That'd be nice. You can see that too when I take that through the water and I'm like sending out those shock waves and those tremors. Every once in a while you'll see a little shad or something like scurry out of the way. Ah, got it fouled a little bit. The top ends. The other cool thing about these baits too, and we'll show you that in a little bit, like a lot of the baits will come with stock hooks as such. And I'm not knocking the hooks. I mean, these hooks landed a 51 incher. It's not the quality of the hooks that I'm worried about. They're fine. And in fact, a lot of ways, it's cool to have these little, like tinier hooks, a little bit, uh, they're thinner, so they penetrate a little bit better. And they're stout. What we'll do, uh, in a little bit here is I'll show you what you can do to like weight these baits just by putting different hooks on them. So like if you want to get them to hang just a little bit more, sometimes it'll actually make them swing out a little bit more. You put a little bit slightly heavier hooks on these really, really buoyant baits. Even though they're buoyant because wood, it's really sensitive to weight. So you can take that and just put a different size hook on, maybe like two sizes up and it adds just enough weight that it'll make the bait hang a little bit more. Obviously not ideal for trying to fish over super shallow while you want to do this hit rise, hit rise, hit rise, hit rise thing. But if you're wanting it to hang just a little bit more and take your time, a good way to do that is to change out the hooks, put a little bit bigger hooks on it. Like I said, not so much because you're concerned about being able to land the fish on them, but it's just a way to integrate weighting into a bait by just changing out something you need on it anyway, which is a hook. 
And especially these little baits like this, these little twitch baits like these cranes. You can really fine tune them with just changing out the hook size. You can get to where you can make them do different things. Like you can put big hooks on the back, leave a small one on the front, and they'll hang those up like that. It's really interesting what you can do. Just play around with it.